Bonjour à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us here today at our beautiful school, Northwest Calgary, École du Nouveau Monde. Before we get started, I'd like to take an opportunity to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of Treaty 7 nations in southern Alberta, and that the city of Calgary is the home of the Métis Nation of Alberta, region number three. My name is Daniel Terrien. I'm the superintendent of Conseil Scolaire Franco-Sud, the Southern Francophone Education Region. We are honored today to welcome both Minister Lagrange and Minister Milligan today for an important announcement. Without further ado, I'd like to invite to the podium Minister of Education, Mrs. Adriana Lagrange. Thank you so much, and good afternoon, everyone. It is wonderful to be joined by all of you on this impactful, important, and positive day where I get the honor of announcing the government's continued commitment to improving the well being of Alberta students through additional investments in mental health resourcing and supports. The relationship between positive mental health and academic success, <clears throat> pardon me academic success is of significant importance and one that is a top priority for our government. I have heard firsthand from parents, from teachers and other school staff just like yourselves that learning disruptions and temporary school closures over the course of the past couple of years have impacted the mental health and wellness of many students, if not all, in one form or another. As a mother, and a grandparent, and as a former school board trustee, I care about ensuring that in Alberta, students are greeted with a supportive and welcoming environment at school that sets them up for success. Through Budget 2022, and in response to the Child and Youth Wellbeing Action Plan, we committed to allocating $110 million towards comprehensive supports in response to the impacts of learning disruptions on the K-12 school system, particularly our K-12 students. This included up to $10 million per year for the next two years, specifically dedicated to new mental health supports for struggling students. We know that more resources are needed to support students across the province, which is why we are doubling the original funding allocation. So no longer $10 million, we are $20 million for a total of up to $40 million over two years. We will now be able to support close to 60 mental health pilot projects in K-12 schools across this province. These projects will take a collaborative and innovative approach to improving student mental health through counseling, social and emotional learning, student assessment, family and parent-oriented parent supports, and training for school staff. Projects will take place in both rural and urban province, and every different kind of school authority is represented, including public, Catholic, Francophone, public charter, independent, and First Nations schools. The projects will begin this fall and winter, and they will help inform future government decisions in the areas of student mental health. In my mandate letter, a key priority was working with the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions on expanding efforts to support students who are struggling at home or in the classroom. Our intention is to help drive systemic improvements in Alberta's education system that will benefit all K-12 students right across the province. We know that learning disruptions has also caused many students to fall behind their grade level, and we will continue the important work of targeted programming that we initiated last year to address this issue. So just as a reminder, last school year, we announced that all children in grades one to three, <coughs> pardon me, would be assessed for their literacy and numeracy development every year going forward. So we also gave school authorities an additional $45 million to hire and train more staff purchase learning resources, and design their own programs and interventions tailored to address learning disruptions. 
This funding helped more than 70,000 students last year in grades one to three. School authorities reported that their students became more confident and enthusiastic, and they also reported positive feedback from parents. The funding also helped create more opportunities for school staff to collaborate and identify solutions. And as a result, students' literacy and numeracy skills improved by an average of five to seven months. And I heard that just from the, the principal here today at this school. This year, we are building on these successes by providing another $10 million to school authorities so that they can continue with their targeted programming. This year's funding will go towards the same students who are now in grades two to four who continue to struggle. Early literacy and early numeracy skills are strong predictors of a child's long-term academic achievement. Research has shown that if educators can identify and help struggling learners early, then those students can catch up to grade level relatively quickly. As part of Budget 2022, we are allocating $1.4 billion to learning support funding to meet the learning needs of students, including mental health and well-being needs. Alberta's government, through the Ministry of Health Initiatives, also made a recent investment of $87 million over three years to improve access to mental health and pediatric rehabilitation supports for children and youth. And of course, other important supports and services like Kids Help Phone, Text for Hope, Hope for Wellness, Helpline, and Alberta 211 are just a call or a text away. As we proceed to move forward, we will ensure students' mental health and well-being continues to be a top priority and is at the forefront of our decision making. When students experience positive mental health, they are more resilient and better able to learn, succeed, and build healthy relationships. By working closely with our education partners and taking a comprehensive and coordinated approach, we can address disparities within our school system to ensure all students are supported and set up for success. And by providing additional funds to Alberta's youngest learners now, we will be able to prevent the learning disruptions from having a lasting impact on a student's development. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And I'll now turn it over to Minister Milliken, Nicholas Milliken, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Minister Lagrange. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is afternoon now. Uh, and thank you, Ecole de Nouvelle Monde, for hosting us here today for today's announcement. Uh, as noted, my name is Nicholas Milliken. I'm the uh, MLA for Calgary Curry and the Minister for Mental Health and Addiction. So, a critical part of Alberta's recovery oriented system of care for mental health and addiction is addressing the mental health for children and youth in our province. After all, there is a clear link between the mental well-being of, a, of students and their academic achievement. Today's announcements mean increased funding and improved services for Alberta's children and youth. As a father of two young children, one who is in school, ensuring that kids have the opportunity they need at school to achieve their full potential is a priority of mine. The projects announced today by Minister LaGrange are part of a larger plan to make sure that every child has access to the help they need inside and outside of the classroom. This summer, we announced more than 42 million over three years to enhance mental health and addiction supports for children and youth. This funding is going towards targeted school-based and community supports, education and training for professionals working with children and youth, and new mental health classroom teams. Mental health classroom teams are an innovative approach that we're proud to introduce to the province. Led by our incredible partners at CASA, Child, Adolescent and Family Mental Health, these teams offer specialized clinical services for students with complex needs, students who require more support to succeed than regular classrooms can provide. And I had the opportunity to tour uh, the CASA Centre on 63rd in Edmonton, uh, I believe last week. Uh, these students will have an entire team of mental health professionals available to them, including mental health therapists, psychiatrists, behavioral spe specialists, and other health professionals. 
We're also working to expand the Integrated Supports, School Supports Program, or ISSP, a program that's already seen great successes in some Calgary schools. Uh, this is led by the Calgary Police Youth Foundation. Uh, it focuses on prevention and early intervention to build strength and resiliency in children and youth. It offers a range of supports from meal programs to after school structured, uh, physical structured education and access to mental health professionals. The goal is to increase physical and mental well being, improve academic achievement, and reduce high risk behaviors among children and youth. Over the next two years, we plan to scale up and expand the integrated school support program mental health classroom teams, and other critical supports to schools across the province. While these new programs will go a long way to strengthen services for children and youth, they're just the latest in a series of innovative initiatives aimed at giving youth the tools they need to thrive. These include our partnership with Kids Help Phone, which provides children and youth with access to free, confidential, 24-7 support, including crisis support and professional counseling. The expansion of youth mental health hubs, which offer young people and their families a one-stop shop for community-based supports and funding for community-based programs across the province, including valued partners like YMCA Calgary, the Dean Strong Foundation, and the Impact Society, who are working to improve youth mental health here in Calgary. Together, these actions reflect our commitment to helping children and youth, because setting up our kids for success means giving them access to all the help they need, whether it's for math or mental health. As a parent, I strongly believe in the actions we're taking to help young Albertans succeed in school and thrive in every part of their lives. I would like to quickly again thank Minister LaGrange for her continued efforts to support students here in Calgary and across the province. Alberta's government is taking concrete actions to improve the mental health of children and youth and make a difference in their lives. So thank you very much. And with that, I would invite up uh, Mrs. Danielle Desjardins, Chantel Desjardins, Vice Chair of Franco Sud. Thank you, Minister Minsky. Bonjour à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today on behalf of our Board of Trustees welcome, to welcome Minister Lagrange and Milliken to École du Nouveau Monde. I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce my, fellows trust, my fellow trustees that are present today, Mr. Arnaud Goa, Mrs. Hélène Lemel, Geneviève Poulain, and Karine Gauthier. The learning disruption funding that was provided last year has allowed us to provide support in literacy and numeracy to hundreds of students in grades one to three. To be exact, over 400 students have had access to targeted support in literacy, and close to 250 have benefited from daily intervention to address their numeracy needs. This program has proven to be very successful within our board, with students catching up on their grade level and closing the learning gap caused by the pandemic. Today's announcement will allow us to continue the work that was undertaken last year and ensure our students have solid foundation in literacy and numeracy as they pursue their academic path. We are also thankful that the government of Alberta is recognizing today the needs for new mental health supports in our province's schools. Thanks to this new funding, we'll be able to further enhance the existing supports in place by providing individual and small groups counseling, staff training, as well as additional family school liaison workers and behavioral consultants, among others. We'd like to take the opportunity to thank the, Cal Cal sorry, the Calgary Catholic School District, with whom we have partnered to submit this proposal. This collaborative work will strengthen our mental health capacities and greatly benefit our students and their families. 
We look forward to continue collaborating with the government of Alberta, our parents and guardians, staff and educational partners to ensure the well-being and global success of our Francophone students. Thank you. Merci. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we're going to go to the floors first. There is a stationary mic left of the cameras. So if you could just queue up over there so we can get your audio into the feed. Uh, we're going to ask for one question, one follow-up. There are some people on the line as well, so we will switch back and forth. Um, I'm going to ask if you have a topical question related to the announcement. You go first. Otherwise, we will get going with reporters on the floor. Hi, Alana Smith with the Globe and Mail. Um, I meant my question is for Minister LaGrange. You've made it clear that the government will not implement mask mandates in schools as the rate of respiratory infections grow, but will the government implement any other health measures as reported absences reach 40% in some schools and after the letter yesterday from the Edmonton Public School District? Well, we uh, submitted a document to um, all of the school authorities at the beginning of the school year. Uh, obviously, we're in post-pandemic um, mode. Uh, the document was called the Guide to Outbreak Prevention and Control in Schools, including respiratory, gastrointestinal, and rashes. So this document outlines to school authorities what they can do to um, prevent or to slow down the transmission within schools. Obviously, school authorities have been dealing with outbreaks um, ever since schools were first in place. That is something that is very known to school authorities. And uh, we have been very clear that we do not anticipate going to a masking mandate. Uh, that being said, uh, obviously, if people feel more comfortable, whether it's staff or students or parents feel more comfortable with children and staff members wearing masks, they, of course, can make that personal decision for themselves. Sure. Um, and your government has said that the focus is to keep children in class because of the harmful effects of public health measures that were implemented in previous years. Mm -hmm. If there are no additional changes coming other than what you just mentioned, and there's no online learning alternatives, kids are staying home and not learning whether it's because they're sick or their parents are being cautious. So how can you defend the UCP's current strategy when in fact it is not keeping kids in the classroom? Well, first and foremost, uh, the uh, safety and security of all our students is of uppermost. Um, you know, it's top of mind for, for myself and for my ministry. We're in constant conversations with all the school divisions right across the province. We know then uh, that in a post-pandemic world uh, that we do need to look at uh, going back to the strategies that we had in place, the processes and protocols we had in place prior to the, the pandemic, prior to COVID. Uh, so we are working very closely to ensure that they have the resources and supports that they need. Uh, that being said, it is very different right across the province, so there is not a one-size-fits-all um, for this situation. Uh, what I would say is that we're going to continue to monitor the situation. Of course, we'll take guidance from the, chief, the new Chief Medical Officer of Health, and uh, beyond that, we will continue to um, ensure that our, our schools and our, um, and our uh, staff members are, are protected through whatever possibilities there are out there. Uh, we are always, always wanting to ensure that our schools are safe, and that is the priority of every superintendent. I know uh, Superintendent Danielle here um, looks at that, and they allocate uh, support staff, whether it's additional uh, substitute teachers or whatever to deal with the situation. Keeping students in the classroom and learning um, in person is of the highest priority. It is the very reason we are here today announcing these additional $40 million of measures on top of all the other mental health and wellness measures because of the fact that we've seen through the disruptions that the mental health and wellness of our students has been negatively affected. So of course we want to keep our students in the classroom learning. Uh, this is for the minister as well, uh, Bill McFarland, okay. CTV News. Um, we know now both uh, CBE and CCSD are, uh, are, have already moved some of their classrooms re to remote learning because they can't staff them anymore because of the number of people away. We know about those high absentee rates. So we're already moving away from in-person learning. What, what is being done or what's being considered at this point to try to keep that in-person learning going? The fact is that we're already starting to lose that in places. Well, in, in fact, uh, school authorities have the ability to um, assess their situations and deal with the situations that they have on hand. I just want to remind everybody that through the pandemic, there were numerous times where we had to, uh, for operational reasons, and th these are operational reasons, take measures that needed to uh, be taken to address 
the, um, the situations that were happening. So school authorities have that capability and that ability to do that. And again, through the guidance document that we provided, there's additional measures they can take to ensure that uh, students and staff are safe. So we're gonna continue to work very closely with them and ensure that they have what they need to make things happen. But what is, what is being done or what can be done specifically to keep those kids in classes at this point? We're, starting, we're seeing this both in, in, with our, the loads on children's hospitals. We're also seeing it within, uh, within classrooms. I can tell you as a parent myself, I know within my own child's school, um, we hear from teachers, we're hearing from the boards as well. They're starting to lose that right now. And it's not just COVID, it's this this of course, whole it's, it's all series of, it's, of other illnesses. It's, so as it's you indicate, it's not just COVID. It's, there's flu viruses that are out there. There's additional gastrointestinal uh, concerns that are out there. Um, again, schools have within their purview, they are doing what they can in terms of hand washing, increased sanit sanitization of um, contact areas. The biggest um, thing that they can do is uh, encourage students and staff when they're sick to stay home. That is something that we are seeing, and I can, want to congratulate the parents and the staff members that are taking that advice uh, very, very um, seriously. And if they're ill, to stay home so they don't pass it along. Again, superintendents and uh, school principals, et cetera, they have the ability to access uh, what they need in terms of um, uh, educational assistance, uh, support staff, substitute teachers. They need to follow through with their proper protocols and procedures that they have available to them. We will continue to monitor the situation. Of course, my department is in very close contact with the new Chief Medical Officer of Health and their department, and if any further guidance comes our way, we will certainly make sure that that is available to school authorities. Perfect, so we have a, quite a few callers on the line, so I'm gonna turn it over to the operator. Operator, could you put forward the first caller? Thank you, David Staples, Edmonton Journal. Thanks for taking my call, Minister. I have a question about uh, school choice. Um, sure. There's a new uh, charter school starting up in Edmonton, the five um, uh, K to six school. I'm just wondering about uh, your government's commitment to school choice. Um, what are your What are your thoughts on school choice, and what is your commitment to, to charter schools, and how many have opened up since uh, lifting the cap? Okay. Well, thanks, David. Um, we're very committed to school choice. I was honored to be the Minister of Education at the time when we brought forward the Choice in Education Act, which passed. Um, we are very uh, fortunate and blessed in Alberta to have many choices for parents for, for their children. It can be public, it can be Catholic, it can be Francophone, it can be a charter school, a public charter school, or an independent school. It can be home education. Of course, we have First Nations schools as well. So there is numerous choices that parents can avail of themselves of. In terms of the charter schools, uh, given the fact that we were able to lift the cap on the number of schools as well as the number of students within the schools um, because there were huge waiting lists uh, for those charter schools. We have seen five new, um, I believe it's five, possibly a sixth one in, in process right at the moment, um, new charter schools that have opened up and that seems to be a choice that parents are uh, happy to choose. Minister, why, why does the government uh, support school choice. What is the rationale for um, sending money to um, these different kinds of programs? Well, every parent is a, and every uh, uh, member in Alberta that is a taxpayer has the ability to choose the type of education, particularly parents. We want them to be able to choose the type of education they want for their children. Uh, public charter schools have been around for several decades now, and they are providing a um, uh, research-based, knowledge-based, uh, focused-based type of learning that some parents really want for their children, and we want to ensure that they have that opportunity to choose that uh, be because of the fact that uh, there had been um, not a formal cap, but uh, I would say there had been... Um, um, some sentiment that uh, charter schools shouldn't be growing. Uh, we did not feel that way. Our government uh, took the, the stand of ensuring that those caps, uh, whether they were formal or informal, were removed and that uh, those schools could expand and offer choice, the choices that parents want. Great. Thanks, David. Uh, operator, could you put forward the next caller? Yes, Colette Derowitz, Canadian Press. 
Hi, Minister. I just wanted to follow up on the Edmonton Public School Board's request. Um, they're quite clear that that um, kids getting sick is also affecting the mental health of students. And uh, and, and their ask is basically that um, masking be allowed in an outbreak situation. Um, will the Alberta government allow the school board to bring in masking mandates in an outbreak situation, and especially if the new chief medical officer of health would recommend that? Well, I'm not going to speculate on what the new Chief Medical Officer of Health will or will not say. Um, we will take guidance from the new Chief Medical Officer of Health. That being said, the Premier was very clear recently that uh, we do not anticipate having a mask mandate in place. It is, uh, you know, and I was very uh, happy to hear the superintendent of the Edmonton Pop, uh, Public School Division yesterday uh, share that he felt that masking is a personal choice and that that should be respected. Do you have a follow-up? Uh, sorry, so I'm not sure if that answers the question. So it wouldn't be allowed then, or it, it, it could be recommended by the school board and not mandated, or if you could explain that. Well, uh, I have yet to receive a letter from the Edmonton Public School Division, so I will wait to see what that letter entails. Um, as I said, we do not anticipate going to a uh, mandate for public masking uh, within our schools, mandatory masking within our schools. Anyone who chooses to mask within the school, it's certainly a choice. And as I said, the Edmonton Public School Superintendent himself yesterday uh, said that he really uh, values that respectful choice that uh, students and staff members should be allowed that choice. Thank you. Thank Operator, you. Operator, could you put forward the next caller? Yes, Eva, uh, Eva Ferguson, Calgary Herald. Yes, thank you. I do want to follow up uh, Colette's question because I don't think it was answered. I'm hearing from parents that mental health challenges in their students are specifically the result of learning disruptions caused by absences and illness. So I'm going to be very direct. Would you, as Minister of Education, allow individual school boards to mandate masking as they see fit to address the mental health challenges that you are supposedly addressing today? Well, many of the mental health challenges that we're addressing today uh, not only came from the challenges of the learning disruption, but I also hear from parents and teachers and children themselves that it was the masking that contributed to those challenges and to those um, feelings of anxiety. Some have had issues with breathing properly, learning properly. So, of course, the very reason we're here today is to address the mental health and wellness of our students and very much uh, ensure that they are able to learn in person as much as possible. And Ava, do you have a follow-up? I'm going to ask it again. Would you allow school boards to mandate masking as they see fit on their own without approval from the province? Um, school boards were not allowed to mask students in the past without a chief medical officer of health order. Um, so again, I'm not going to anticipate or speculate on what the chief medical of officer of health, the new chief medical of officer of health will actually say. Great. And just given the time, since the ministers do have to be somewhere at one and they have to drive, uh, the next caller will be our last. So uh, moderator, could you please put forward our final caller? Thank you. Janet French, CBC. Hi there, thanks for taking my question. Um, Minister, your mandate letter doesn't make any mention of curriculum renewal, which has arguably been one of your biggest tasks so far in this role. What does this mean about the government's plans for curriculum? Have the rollout plans been delayed or altered, and if so, how? Not at all. We're going to continue with uh, renewing the curriculum. It was, it's, it's part of being the Minister of Education. While it's not specifically mentioned in my uh, mandate letter, it is, of course, uh, one of my responsibilities and duties as the Minister of Education, so we will continue. And I have to say that I met with every single school division across this province uh, from about um, June on to the end of October, um, and education partners, there would have been about 75 different groups, and uh, curriculum and curriculum implementation was not one of their concern items. And then, Janet, if you have a follow-up. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. 
Uh, your medit letter also says that you are to, quote, add a significant number of educational assistants in our classrooms. Tell me what your targets and timelines are for numbers of EAs, and where are you going to find people with this training, given that many school boards are already having so much difficulty recruiting and retaining these workers? Well, those are all the, the uh, issues that uh, my department is delving into um, right now. They are looking at uh, what is required, where they're required. We're working closely with school authorities, uh, ensuring that uh, when we roll this out that uh, it is thoughtful and that it does meet the needs of our school authorities. So we will be uh, addressing all of those concerns very, very soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact either Emily in Minister LaGrange's office or me in Minister Milliken's office. Okay. Thank Thanks. you, everyone.